Hi, are you ready to end the coronavirus, get it back down to its normal levels, or which is hardly any, and also get rid of the panic that's causing our the world's economy to go into the toilet so that no one has jobs and we're going to run out of toilet paper because everybody's scarfing it up? Well, I have a plan. And the best way to describe this plan to you, to, get, to give you an idea of the effectiveness of it, is to tell you a little story by asking a question. If I, if I were out deer hunting and I had a hundred arrows and I fired a hundred arrows at a deer but they all missed, how many deer would I be taking home to feed my family? And of course you would say zero. And what if I took the biggest largest boulders as you could imagine and threw them at the deer but of course missed the deer every time. How many deer would I be taking home? And again, the answer is zero. The same thing is true when it comes to dealing with the coronavirus or with the flu in general. If you use the biggest boulders against the, against the coronavirus, and none of them are effective, how much good is it doing? And the answer is not much. And if we if we really went at it, you know, and like ten times the effort like they're doing in Wuhan, how successful has that been? They're not bringing a single deer home. They're not containing the virus, and they're not protecting the people. They're they're trying to make the, the people who get it feel less sick. But then they find they get they get the virus again and again. And the second time they get it, they're already beat down. And so the risk of them dying or having permanent injury is much, much higher. One expert deer hunter with the right kind of mental attitude and the right amount of patience can get the deer with one arrow. There's an old Indian saying I heard once that if you fire one arrow you got the deer. If you fire two arrows you might have gotten the deer and if you fire three you didn't get the deer. So you get the idea there because the deer is going to run away. right? The thing that, that works is if for the for the bow, or whatever they call it, the deer hunter, to strike the deer, hopefully in the heart, so the deer drops, just like that. The same thing is true with the virus. If you use the right approach and find the heart, quote unquote, of the virus, you can stop the virus. We do it all the time. You and I, we breathe in about 1,200 viruses an hour in our body magnificently is like the deer hunter. It never allows the virus to get a hold of us or maybe once a year or every few years or whatever. You do that 1,200 times an hour, 24 hours a day with no days off. So you are already a skilled deer hunter when it comes to protecting yourself from the virus. Now, how do you do it? You don't know how you do it most likely. In, you might think, well, I take this supplement, I take vitamin C, silver, or elderberry, or whatever, and yes, those all work, but how does it work right down to the nitty-gritty? It works because our immune system gets built up by doing things like hugging. I hug people with the flu, I touch my face, I lick my fingers, I touch my nose, I touch my eyes, I touch my ears, I don't get the flu because I understand the heart of the virus. And the heart of a virus is not its, it's not its parts so much as it is its negative charge. Because each one of my cells and each one of your cells have a membrane potential that's on the outside of the, and on the inside of each one of your cells and in the nucleus too is a bunch of negatively charged charges, whatever they are, membrane potential on the inside of the cell. 
So the way the virus works is it comes in and it tries to poke a hole in the cell and squirt whatever's in there so it can replicate. Right? But that negative charge of the virus comes up to the comes up to the wall and it and it re, is repelled as we learned in the first week of high school chemistry that negative charges repel negative charges. So the virus comes up and it can't get in. It's repelled and that's what you're doing 1200 times an hour. All right. As I mentioned before, hugging is a way to raise your memory potential. It raises your immunity. Kissing raises your immunity by raising your memory potential. It's electrifying, isn't it? Kissing. <laughs> See how that works? The words mean things. All right. Laughter generates an, an increased, higher immune system. Right? Yes. So there was electricity in the room. It was so funny. So those are three things you can do. And there's here's what I do. And let me grab this here. I've got it on low because it makes a whoop 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 sound on the on your screen. So I'll hold it back here a little bit too. This generates the kind of support that, uh, that our membrane potential needs. So I use this. And I have them running 24 hours a day to keep my membrane potential up. And it goes, it's because it's based on electricity, based on superconductor energies, it travels around the, the earth seven times a second. And you're, you're, you might be noticing how you're feeling right now. Now this is on low, you'd feel it even stronger if I had it on high. But again, I don't want it to make a noise to be so distracting. So this here raises membrane potential. And that's how another way of protecting ourselves. And I wouldn't need this if, it, if we were living 150 years ago. But we're living today, and we have lots of things that lower our membrane potential. And the biggest one of all, the newest one of all, is 5G. And I learned today. Uh, more so than I had realized before, that f by listening to some experts who are in the field, that the implementation of 5G is really a combination of the really high, uh, high frequency, uh, you know, 25 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz, 90 gigahertz. That's one category. But there's two other categories. There's the mid-band range. Of, I think it's uh, from 3 to 10 or something like that gigahertz. And anything lower than that approximately would be your low band. Well, they're combining all of them because in a, even in a city, you're going to have areas where you need to go reach a long distance. So you need one form. And then you have the other form to fill in where, the, where there's more uh, you know, high rises and things like that. But the point of all that is, is that we're not just getting a few cell towers. They're having to put in like double, triple what was there before, including the ones that are so close to us. And that makes them more dangerous by far. They lower our immunity. And it just so happens that in the city of Wuhan, they have complete 5G coverage. It's considered to be the premier city in China for 5G. It's their showcase city. It just started on October 31st. And it is cumulative in its effects on lowering your immune system. So the people of Wuhan are suffering from that. Some of the people are dying from things that have no symptoms of the flu whatsoever. Now, normally the flu, when it gets warmer, and I believe the temperature is around 47 degrees, the flu will naturally die off. However, if the illnesses are caused not by, by the virus, which is being aided in its ability to infect by 5G, but if in addition to that, there are other troublesome cause, uh, problems, because when your membrane potential is down, it's not just the flu, it makes you tired. And though, you, and if, you know, so when you want to eat, you're going to eat junk. And then your body starts not working properly, so you're more susceptible to all kinds of illnesses. 
Uh, one of the common things with 5G, however, is ringing in the ears. So if you've been getting ringing in the ears, particularly in the last year, you have a big clue as to what caused it. Ringing in the ear is not good for you. It keeps you awake at night, and when you don't sleep, it makes you, el makes you susceptible to getting sick. Is this all starting to make sense? Now, I've said some things that sound crazy to you because we've all been taught, well-meaning people have said, we need to wash our hands constantly, not touch our faces, not to do this, not to lick our hands and put them on our face, and all that. I've made about, oh, a half dozen videos of me doing this. And the first one's maybe over a week ago. I'm not sick. I don't have any flus. And I do this all the time. It's not just a matter of doing it for the videos. I do it. You know, I mean, don't you touch your face without even realizing it? I do. Oh, I got my finger in my ear. Big deal. Anyway, with 5G. So we must stop 5G or the entire world is going to panic mode. And depending on how much 5G is in the area will determine how sick people get. And it gets worse and worse and worse. So that even if you're in the United States where we have a comparatively low level of 5G compared to China, more and more people will get sick. So if you have a slightly compromised immune system and someone else has a, any kind of flu, whether it's from, from Wuhan or anywhere else, you're more likely to get it. Because you're being beaten down. We're all being beaten down. The other thing to avoid is Wi-Fi and your wireless telephones. Wireless phones are one of the worst. Do not use a wireless phone. It's really, really bad. It's like your smart beater that's attached to the outside of your home. It's also really bad. It has a combination of AC and DC that it spikes every few seconds. And it travels like 50, 60 feet or more. There have been studies doing showing that people can get sick from at, at that distance and greater. It goes through walls. You know, like this goes through mountains, walls, and windows. That stuff does too. So those are bad. Turn your cell phones off. I didn't say airport mode. I said off. They spike every time you text, and they spike every time they ring. And they are getting you, and they're making you impotent, or sterile, uh, or uh, sterile, the word for women, I'm drawing a blank. Your kids at school with all that Wi-Fi that's there, that's coming from the ceiling or whatever, it's making them sterile. Or it'll make their children sterile. We have to stop doing these things. You really have to stop if you want to survive. Now, the first thing is 5G. We must stop 5G or all of you will be out of work if you are so, I'm on social security. I don't know how long they can keep sending those checks and what can you, what will we be able to buy with it? The stores are, are already in some places are getting bare. Even where I live, they're starting to get bare. Even though I have all of this stuff running, there's people are hearing the news and they're getting frightened. And that's not good. And are you going to sleep with one eye open? I don't care how many rifles, shotguns, or whatever you have. You know, when everybody's gone berserk, you're going to have to leave some time. And there are going to be more of them than there are of you. And even if you survive, everybody else is dead around you. It doesn't. You don't win. None of us win. If you're the last person to starve to death, did you win? I don't think so. It's just too many things, and too many people will get drunk, and they'll use candles or whatever, and they'll set their house on fire. We're going to have fires, all, you know, and you can't control fires very well. There's a lot of them. So there's just so many reasons. We have to stop the 5G, but the key thing is your membrane potential. If your membrane potential is high, the flu cannot go through its life cycle. That's the key. It's the one arrow that prevents anything bad from happening to you. So if you if you sit on this thing and like it, this video, you don't tell anybody, you and I could be the last ones to starve to death. 
if you want something better than that, if you want something better for your children, then you will let people know about this and let them decide whether or not what I'm telling you is correct. And you can look on Google in images, look for membrane potential, and you'll find some of the drawings there. It will show you all the negatives of the inside membrane that are there. And all viruses, you can look this up on Wikipedia, all viruses have a negative charge. It doesn't matter if it is a weaponized virus, it still has a negative charge and that's how it makes you sick. Bacteria also all have negative charges. Even gram-positive uh, bacteria have a negative charge. So if you want to keep protect yourself from infections, keep your immune system going, the number one thing is the membrane potential. Yes, we have immune cells. Immune cells have a membrane potential, by the way. They are like the cops. You know, somebody, somebody steals something from you, breaks in your house, whatever. You call them up and the cops show up five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, whatever it is. That's your immune cells. They get there, they show up, and they kind of clean things up. But the primary defense that you have are, the, are your locks on your door, right? Your, your membrane potential is the thing that's there at every single cell right at the front line that does not allow the virus in. That is the key. As long as your membrane potential is high, you are safe from any virus. It doesn't protect you from panic from viruses. The panic could kill a thousand of us for every virus that kills somebody. So if you let people know about this, and maybe you're feeling better right now, you might notice how relaxed you feel. You're going to be starting to get it. This is a, this is, has an electrical process. You're, your membrane potential is electrical. And I'm going to set this down for a moment just because my arms get, my hand is getting a little crunched actually what it is. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> got rid of my finger there. All right. Uh, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> um, anyway, it was probably pretty good because most things I say are pretty decent. Well, you take care and be sure you share this with everyone because if we don't, you're not going to have food, you're not going to have a job, the government's not going to be able to support you, you're not going to be able to buy things with any money that you might have, and if you have gold, you might have to make it into gold leaf so that for every leaf you give out, you get a sheet of toilet paper. <laughs> All right? That's just a reality. I mean, it's good to be prepared, but we can't prepare for everything, and, and it can be overwhelming. We're designed, stitch in time saves nine. Let's keep our membrane potential up, and then we don't have to worry about the rest of it. All right. Well, thanks for listening. You take care, and God bless.